So according to Woes, ESPN reporting with uh, Mick and Ten uh, that the Lakers are planning to bring Russell Westbrook off the bench in the final preseason game versus the Kings tonight. Darvin Ham and Westbrook have been exploring possibilities of Westbrook quarterbacking second unit, and they'll try it tonight. Uh, he also added, uh, there's hope that Westbrook can play freer and faster with the ball in his hands on the second unit and have to worry less about fitting away from the ball around the starting group. It is certainly an idea they'll continue to discuss with the start of the regular season next week. So right off the bat, this is kind of something that I've been saying for quite some time. Not necessarily him coming off the bench. I still don't think he's going to start off the bench. Uh, I still think he starts in the game. I think they just want to explore it. But hey, Russ has said earlier uh, this offseason that he would, would be willing to come off the bench, whatever it takes for uh, this team to win and be successful. So maybe they do do that. But regardless, I think that they run and operate Russ primarily with the second unit. Like, I think if Russ starts, I've been saying this constantly, is that he'll probably play with the starters, you know, five to seven minutes, and then LeBron and Davis and them will come out, they'll get some rest, and then it's just the Russell Westbrook show. Now, this also goes into what I've been talking about of just allowing Russ to be free. He's doing a great job of buying in, fitting in. And I mean, this proves it. This proves that he's committed. You know, I mean, Russ in the past would never even consider the idea, but he's at least talking with Darvin Ham. He's talking with the coaches. Uh, you know, the whole, you know, video drama of him turns out that he was talking to the coaches about a missed defensive assignment. So the fact that he's actually, you know, committed and trying to make this work, trying to figure it out, willing to come off the bench, willing to sacrifice, that's huge. You know, but I do think the best course of action for Russ is a majority of the time to allow Russ to just be Russ because there is value in Russ. He's still the same guy that put up, you know, triple double year in and year out. Uh, you know, like two years earlier when he was playing with the Wizards, he was putting up a 22 point triple double. We saw what he could do without LeBron and Anthony Davis. The dude put up 30, 15, and 14. Not saying that he's going to do that game in and game out if he comes off the bench or anything like that. But, I mean, look, if he comes off the bench, I really believe he could win six man of the year. Because I do think he would get probably 20, close to a triple-double in that time. Because he's probably going to play 30 minutes total, somewhere around there. Uh, especially if he comes off the bench. Uh, and he'll probably play, you know, 10 minutes or so with the starting lineup. Uh, you know, throughout collectively throughout the game, a little bit with Davis, a little bit with LeBron uh, in the starting group, stuff like that. They'll test stuff out. But even if he just fully committed to just being off the bench and you just scatter his minutes in LeBron's, then I think you always have a guy that could just go off for 30 at any point. And Russ gets the freedom. And we were top five in fast break points and in just fast break period and pace uh, last season. I imagine we're going to be close to that, if not, you know, in the in the higher. Like last year, the Grizzlies were were number one in both of those categories. I wouldn't be shocked with this young team and Russell Westbrook, especially if you're just letting Russ run with the young with the young, you know, athletic guys. I really think that we could be top two or three at the worst in both of those categories of pace and fast break points. Just let Russ go. You know, you're going to have some bad moments. You're going to have some good moments, but if it's within the scope of the second units. You'll take it. You know, the problem is when he's starting and stuff like that and, and closing out games and stuff, if he's, you know, turning the ball over, he's making mistakes or things like that, that's when it becomes really tough because it's like, man, like we can't afford this right now, especially in close games. But if he's going up against bench units, like who's going to stop him? You know, name me a bench in the league that have guys that can actually stop or slow down Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook, I think, could be the most effective uh, coming off the bench or just playing with the second unit regardless. I, you know, I think Darvin Ham may start him to try to make it work because you do want the big three to work. You do want to try to see if they can work. You know, you want to see if, if you can play them in, in quality minutes on the court together. But if you can play Russ, you know, 70% uh, without LeBron James, then you're in a good position. And that was the whole point of getting Russell Westbrook. The whole point of getting Russ was when LeBron isn't in the game or he misses a game, you still have a guy like Russell Westbrook that can go get you stats similar to LeBron James. He can go get you 30, 10, and 10, night in and night out, with or without LeBron. And to put him in a position to be successful, I think you have to let Russ be Russ in many ways. And I do think it can work. I think you're okay with Russ being Russ in the bench unit. 
You know, he's going to, you know, turn the ball over sometimes. He's going to miss some layups, stuff like that. It happens. You know, it, it, I mean, great example that nobody ever talks about. Yes, Russ r- led the league last season in uh, missed layups, right? But do you know who number two was? Number two was Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum missed the second most layups in the league last year behind Russell Westbrook. And nobody ever talks about that. Nobody. And and if you just go look at the list, it's all stars. Like, it's guys that you would be like, what? Like, really? Those guys are on the list? Like, it's surprising. And so, Russ missing layups, it's just part of it. Like, again, Jason Tatum was number two and missed layups. But nobody mentions that. But you you can swallow that a little more if he's running with the second unit. Because all the second unit is, is to either keep leads, hopefully gain leads, or just stay within games. Well, if you have a guy like Russell Westbrook, you can either come back or you can extend leads when LeBron and Anthony Davis go out. You know, so if we start off great and we're doing well and we have like, say, a five-point lead and Russ comes in with the second unit, well, then Russ is good enough to maintain that lead at least or just extend it, go from, you know, up five to up 15. And and you always have those threats on the court. And that's what I think would really work. And, and not just that, but then it also frees up more because then you could run, you know, say uh, a lineup of uh, you know, Patrick Beverly, um, say Walker, uh, LeBron, Davis, and, you know, Bryant, something like that. So you got some good size. You, uh, Walker with the 6'10 wingspan and stuff like that would be huge. Uh, you could also, you know, if you wanted to, run Kendrick Nunn. Kendrick Nunn, Walker, you know, so have Pat Bev and, and Russ off the bench, stuff like that. Like, you can mix and match pieces if you were able to bring Russ off the bench. And I do think Russ would be most effective off the bench. And I think he, like, you know, like Woj said in the thing, the idea is that he could be more freely and have the ball in his hands more, which is what you want. You know, if Russ is on the court with a bunch of, you know, your role guys, you want the ball in Russ's hands. Russ is going has proven like he's he's a guy that's capable of taking over games, winning games, stuff like that. Like if he was on like the Wizards or you know uh, the Knicks or something like that, we'd all be saying like they're gonna win a bunch of games with Russell Westbrook. You know Russell Westbrook is good enough to to win them games. Or like say he goes, say you do the Charlotte deal, right? And they actually played Russell Westbrook. Everyone would be going. Why are they playing Russell Westbrook when they're trying to tank, right? Because Russell Westbrook's going to win you some games. Well, why can't the same be true for the Lakers, especially if he's coming off the bench? You know, especially if he's, or even if he's not coming off the bench, if he's running primarily with the second unit. I think that that would be great because I just think opposing defenses aren't going to be able to stop him. I think he's going to be able to just be able to create and be Russ. I also think if he shows that willingness and is willing to do so, He could stick around for a long time. Imagine Russ being your sixth man. I mean, I think most teams, if not every team in the league, would welcome Russ as a sixth man. Like, if Russ would be willing to come off the bench, I don't think there's a team in the league that wouldn't take Russell Westbrook off the sixth bench. And that's like the Warriors and all those teams included. You're telling me that you would, like, the Warriors wouldn't love to have a Russell, like, just the different type of attacks and just offensive schemes and stuff like that you could have. Imagine having Russ with all those shooters and stuff. Like, of course, but... If he's starting, that's a different story. And $47 million is a lot of money. And some people are going to say, because I see it all the time, people always like, well, you, you know, you're benching a guy for $47 million. The Lakers didn't trade him for his contract. The Lakers traded for him because they believe that he could achieve so much on this Laker team and really help LeBron James. That, that the pressure on LeBron James wouldn't have to be so high in his later years. They don't care how much he's paying. If he was making $100 million... They, don't, they didn't trade him because they were like, God, you know it would be great? A $47 million contract. No, they traded him because the idea is LeBron James can play off the ball if Russ has the ball. LeBron James also is going to miss some games. So you have a guy like Russ. Uh, LeBron James is going to need rest. He can't play 50 minutes a game. You know, so you have Russ. That's why they went and got Russell Westbrook. They're just now trying to make it work and trying to make it fit the best of their ability. And... You're, you're trying to try different things, and as long as Russ is open and willing to those things, then I think the Lakers are in a really good position. I think the Lakers are in a really good spot, and I really do think Russell Westbrook uh, can just be the most effective and just monster that we need, and I really do think Russ could translate to a lot of wins, a lot of wins, 
if he comes out. Like, this team, if Russ embraces the six-man role, then he literally, I, I really believe he could win six-man of the year. You know, because I think he's going to score enough. He's going to get assists. He's going to get rebounds. He's going to get all that stuff. I wouldn't be shocked. If he came off the bench, I wouldn't be shocked if he got close to a triple-double every night. You know, because now he could just be him. So he could play Russell Westbrook basketball. He doesn't have to play, you know, within the scope and the schemes. But he also has to be able to understand when LeBron and AD aren't in the game, I get to be Russ. But when I am playing with LeBron and AD, I need to play within the system, which he's done a good job of. And I'm very proud of what I've seen from him the, the first you know, handful of preseason games. Because you got to keep in mind, it's been two weeks. And Russ is trying to completely reinvent and reestablish his game. Things are going to take time. And that's why like, people are always like, you're so you know, defensive of Russ and stuff like that. And it's because the guy is trying. You know, and I've said this a million times, like, how would you feel if you were trying to do something or you were trying to prove something and the whole world or just the, your loved ones, let's say the people that, that you care about, all were like, man, you're not going to be changed. Stop. Just cut it out. You know, or like, let's say you were trying to start a business or something and you're all proud and excited about it. And everyone that you care about and look to, we're all like, yeah, like, dude, why are you doing that? Stay, stay at your job. Like, come on. You're not good enough. You're not good enough to start a business. You're not smart enough. You're not, you'd be like, damn, like, can you at least see if I can? Like, can I at least make it? Like, can I at least, you know, make an attempt, you know, or, you know, something happens with the spouse or something like that. And, you know, all is forgiven. You're trying to prove yourself. How would you feel if it got kept throwing in your face? Like, let the guy prove right or wrong. You know, like, I just, I think he's shown he's willing to make the changes. He's willing to make the sacrifices. He's willing to make the attempts. And him willing to come off the bench and talking actively with about it with Darvin Ham, I think shows that he's actually trying. And I love that. But anyway, those are my thoughts and opinions. And as always, I pass the question on you. Let me know yours down in the comment section below. What do you think? Uh, are you excited for this news? Are you not? Do you think you should come off the bench? However you feel, good, bad, ugly, somewhere in between. Let me know down in the comment section below.